All right, YouTube. Hey, welcome back to another Silver Saturday. Uh, another trip to the LCS. Just got a little few things. I'm um, trying to finish off the Eagle roll and just some more constitutional. I uh, got a tube for quarters, and I got some quarters to put in there. There's got two dollars worth of uh, quarters and a dollar, or sorry, yeah, and a dollar of dimes uh, to put in the roll and three Eagles. To uh, these are dealer choice 2009 old school, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, simple trip to the LCS. Um, report from there, uh, business is normal, I guess you'd say, for the way things have been the last few months. They're very busy, um, doing their uh, diligence, and there were people in there, in and out. Again, while I was there, whoa, and oh, oh man, um, and uh, it's pretty busy. Uh, the case was fairly full though, so they're buying a lot, it did seem like. So that was interesting. And uh, just uh, no unusual information to pick out of that, but um, let's find our tube here. But, uh, what I did want to talk about, the title of the show, the episode, whatever you want to call it. Um, bribing Border Guards has been quite the discussion for a while. <laughs> Me and uh, Midwest Prepper, the artist formerly known as, who now goes by Guns Coast to Coast, have been talking about how much gold do you need to buy Border Guards. You know, you need to have enough gold, that's what you need. What do you need to get? You know, you just have, need to have enough gold to bribe Border Guards. Well, how much is that? Is kind of the question that comes along uh, with that. And um, I got an answer, or at least some information to start the thesis with. Let's put it that way. It's never, There's never a hard and fast rule. Prices are subject to change, right? Um, but I was on State Side Stash video who talked about how much gold you need. And he was being serious, like how much you know you need to save, like two months worth of uh, expenses, you know, in gold or whatever. He was being serious about it. <laughs> uh, and my serious qu answer was, well, really the question is how much gold do you need to bribe the border guards? Um, and I got a response. Somebody else chimed in and I, and I forgot the name of the who responded, but anyway, I'll link to that video and uh, you'll be able to see it from there. But, uh, they commented that at the fall of Vietnam, the price was two, so two ounces of gold to get out of the country. And I'm like, well, that's a good starting planning point, right? Now, there's a lot of variables that go into that. Um, was that um, two ounces for an individual? And, you know, who were they bribing? They weren't really bribing border guards, probably. They were probably bribing other government officials. So it's a little bit different scenario. It's a little bit different uh, people you're dealing with than uh, our discussion. But uh, it's a good po starting point, right? So if you need, needed two ounces of gold for each individual, and thinking about Vietnam 1975, um, it was probably in the form of jewelry. I'm willing to postulate. So... Uh, they were, how were they testing it? How were they verifying authenticity? You know, um, the Asians value gold very much. So they have a very keen eye, uh, and they're, they're used to it. So that was probably, uh, something they worked their way through. Um, but so there's a lot of factors that go into it. So having it in, in coin form, as we've talked about, um, you know, gives it a little bit more veracity of what it is, especially in our cases where it's not a, you know, gold jewelry could be easily faked here and, you know, people, uh, you know, not really know what they're doing or have. And uh, so in that case, with what we deal with, like the problem you get with people who don't deal with uh, resources or, or, or money <laughs> very often is they either want to overprice it or underprice it, Right. So depending on who you're dealing with, they could ask for too much or too little. So your your gold in question um, 
could go up. So, but if we planned for two ounces of gold for a family of four, that's eight ounces, right? Just to get you across one border checkpoint. Who knows, who knows about the another, another one or another one? Or to get smuggled out of the country. Another thing I wanted to look at is cartels right now are charging people a VIP access to get smuggled across the border. <laughs> How much are the cartels charging? Um, maybe do a dollar equivalent to gold for that. Maybe you get a discount for using gold for being a money of, of record. Um, so that'd be interesting to compare that. But eight ounces for a family of four, you know, that's, that's quite a bit of, that's quite a stash for most, it's a stretch. And we haven't been, you know, I've been planning on, you know, having fractional pieces, you know, like tenth and quarter and half ounce and, uh, you know, using a couple here or there for whatever, like, oh, the kind of, that, that kind of, what's kind of pricey, but it's a good starting point, you know, and as we know, value is held, um, there was probably a certain amount of hyperinflation at that time, 75 in the Vietnamese currency. So <clears throat> your money's no good here. It was, it was a real thing. So going to gold uh, made sense. And it probably had more value than we would even estimate. So if we had two ounces of gold today, let's equate that into labor at least, or at least something we can think about. That's a, you know, lower level monthly income for a lot of people. I mean, that uh, $5,000 a month is common here in America, right? Uh, there's a lot of people make a lot more, a lot of people make a lot less. Well, let's say that's that's a pretty good monthly wage, you know? So, um, and if you got two people working, like, uh, <laughs> that's another case. But, um, so if you look at it from that perspective, saving uh, a month of wages to cross, that's what it takes to cross the border, as a planning factor, something to think about the price of gold fluctuating in that realm, you know, going up or down could affect that. Now for our purposes, because we're so heavily invested in the uh, silver realm. And as I've, as I've documented uh, we've only got the fractional ounces of gold. Um, man, you got to have a long way to go, but if you transport it to silver, like how much silver is that? Well, right now the ratio is like what? 78, you know, multiply that by eight. That's, is that over 500 ounces? Over 500 ounces of silver uh, in for the eight ounces of gold equivalent. Am I doing my math right? Yeah, roughly. More than that. It's more than 500. Like, the hard part about that is carrying it and somebody taking it. Like, you, sh you show up somebody with this big stack of, oh, yeah, it's valuable, but, like, what are they going to do with it? This guy's manning a checkpoint going back to a, uh, you know, a room or something and in a tent, you know, and sleep in or whatever, like he doesn't want to take, deal with that. That's where gold is so valuable. Um, and that's why you really should take it seriously. I think, uh, in a, as a, as a plan to use it as money, uh, because we need something really, really valuable. Uh, and it's really important. Um, yeah, <laughs> it has, it has advantages, drastic advantages over silver. Um, in those situations because of the portability and the, the, the value therein, um, you know, even if silver got down to 50 to one, that's still 350 ounce or 400 ounces. Goodness. It's a lot to silver to carry around till you get to the point to use it. Whereas eight ounces of gold, you know, two ounces per individual carrying it with them in some wear pocket, you know, sewn in belt, whatever your options are. Easy peasy, right? So uh, to continue to that line and to plan uh, for reality check, what you might need gold for, and there's other scenarios where you might need it in the uh, apocalypse, right? Uh, to pay people for other things just as important as getting across the border or a border or across town. Um, but paying for things uh, illicitly, <laughs> say it that way, um, Gold is going to be much more uh, necessary to get those big ticket, high dollar things. You know, you're not going. To, it's going to be hard to get smuggled for 500 ounces of silver. Although somebody might take it, if you know, if you're dealing more um, in a less permissive environment. Um, so that's some thoughts on that subject that we've loving 
uh, cherish uh, with the bribing border guards uh, with uh, your gold. So we're going to have to up our game if we want to reach that target. Not that I want to leave the country, but it's a good thing to think about and how you have a plan for, right? Because as I've talked about, the Chinese falling out of the sky is one of the few times that I would be, you know, getting out of here. So um, having that at least a plan of like, well, I need to have it. Think about having this much wealth, you know, because they're not going to want my, you know, George Washington quarters, <laughs> you know. And it's going to be hard enough the way it is, but uh, gold does do miraculous things and it has for a long time so maybe it's your maybe just think about that opportunity if you have any sort of sort of plan and then uh back plan it for any of your other uh shtvf uh, operations or options how many ounces we got left here to get in this seven uh, six more Six more in our in a year can. So, uh, just throwing it out there, uh, YouTube. Hope everybody's having a good weekend. It's really hot here. I got to get the fan back on because last time I noticed a lot of feedback from the fan. So now that I'm burning up, I got to kick that back on and cool it off in here. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, hope you're doing good. Uh, continue to do things. I got to get a garden update. The, there's, there's struggles there. Um, and uh, just uh, prep hard. Live free.